Today, we're remaking Sceptile, the final evolution of the beloved Gen 3 starter Trico and the unexpected hero of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2, Grovile. Sceptile has had renown among fans for some time. It's got a great design as in addition to its surface level grassiness, it also bears a reptilian, draconic side with its dinosaur-like design and access to moves like Dragon Claw. Ash also had a Sceptile while traversing the Hoenn region, raising it all the way from Trico and having it become one of his most reliable Pokemon. It even battled the legendary likes of Deoxys, Darkrai, and Regirock. Today, we'll be examining if Sceptile's tenure in the competitive scene was similarly legendary. And so, we ask, how great was Sceptile actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. There was a lot to like about Sceptile when it hit the competitive scene in Generation 3. Its speed stat was absolutely amazing, on par with the tier-defining Dugtrio. This allowed it to outrun Tyranitar after a Dragon Dance, as well as get the jump on the natural speedster Starmie and strike them hard with its super effective stab. A stab type that also smacked the tier's omnipresent bulky waters and Claydol. With a solid base 105 special attack stat and a solid move pool including moves like Crunch, Pursuit, Leech Seed, and Endeavor, Sceptile seemed primed for success. But sadly, things weren't quite that simple, and Sceptile had a lot of problems holding it back. First of all, its signature stab, Leaf Blade, was 70 base power in Gen 3, meaning it was on par with Hidden Power Grass. That kind of strength was fine on a bulky Pokemon like Celebi, but not on a Pokemon with Sceptile's fragility. The existence of Celebi was a major roadblock for Sceptile as well, as Celebi both was an excellent answer to Sceptile and was was incredibly strong competition. Furthermore, Sceptile's coverage moves were not nearly as strong as they needed to be given its frailty. Even when hitting super effectively, it couldn't KO the opposition as fast as it had to to compensate for the fact that it struggled to take a hit. There was also the matter of finding that super effective coverage to begin with. Whether it was hidden power, fire, or ice, Sceptile was going to miss out on something major, and being unable to scratch Metagross and Jirachi or Salamence and Zapdos were both pernicious poisons to pick. Nevertheless, Sceptile did have a niche thanks to its access to Leech Seed, one of the best moves in the game, and its blazing fast speed. It was the game's fastest Leech Seed user, and thus it could run a substitute Leech Seed set that was potentially incredibly annoying, stalling out many Pokemon one-on-one, -on -one, forcing them to switch, giving Sceptile another sub so it could repeat the cycle over and over. And those four switches were especially nasty alongside the spike Sceptile was usually paired with, particularly because with Leaf Blade and Hidden Power Fire, Sceptile threatened the tier's rapid-spinning trifecta of Starmie, Claydol, and Fortress. Yes, Celebi could pull off Subseed as well, but it was far more Dugtrio-prone than Sceptile, and it didn't have Sceptile's amazing capability to revenge kill Starmie and Dragon Dance Tyranitar. And with Substitute, Sceptile could even weaken itself into Overgrow range to power up its Leaf Blade. But make no mistake, Sceptile was niche. It offered just about nothing to a team defensively, and you couldn't just slap it on a team over Celebi because of Celebi on that team was responsible for taking on Zapdos, you'd be toast. As even though it resisted Thunderbolt, Sceptile was far from a Zapdos answer. As such, fitting Sceptile onto a team was specific, but under the right circumstances, it could be quite effective. Sceptile had to settle for this, given how it would run circles around Yu Yu and thus remained borderline. But overall, not a bad debut generation. Sceptile's issues with power and coverage were beautifully remedied in Generation 4. So much so, the changes Diamond and Pearl brought about almost seemed designed for it. Weak stab? Forget Leaf Blade. Though it was now 90 base power, it was also physical thanks to the new damage system. Of much greater interest was Sceptile's 140 base power Leaf Storm off of its much better special attack. Not only that, but Sceptile was also boosted greatly with the newly added items Life Orb and Choice Specs. Suddenly, it was threatening the two-hit KOs and one-hit KOs of Pokemon of its speedy and frail stature needed to, mostly with its stab of course, but with its coverage as well, which had also been improved massively. Focus Blast provided Sceptile with a powerful anti-steal tool, while Dragon Pulse was excellent for allowing Sceptile to hit Dragon types without needing to resort to Hidden Power Ice, leaving it free to run another Hidden Power. Now Sceptile wasn't quite strong enough to make any sort of real niche for itself in OU, tantalizing though its speed stat was to a few players who experimented with it briefly, appreciating its ability 
ability to outrun Scarf Tyranitar, but it never amounted to anything. Instead, Sceptile managed to reach Yu Yu this time around and settled into the tier perfectly as one of the most potent attackers around. It didn't effortlessly run everything over, as it did have to take care of switching in lest its poor bulk stop it from doing any damage. But once it was in, not much in the tier was safe from its life orb and choice specs assaults. Tier staples like Rhyperior and the plentiful bulky waters ran in terror from Leaf Storm, as did many neutral Pokemon like Rotom, while the likes of Registeel hated eating Focus Blast, especially with the spike support Sceptile was best with, as it helped it rip through its most common check, Venusaur, more efficiently. Hazard support also ensured bulky fire types like Arcanine and Moltres were reluctant to switch in. Sceptile wasn't just brute force either, though that's not to say there weren't times where it would just specs Leaf Storm everything in sight, which it absolutely did. However, it also had plenty of variety to its onslaught which made it even tougher to deal with. For instance, Life Orb variants could slot in Hidden Power Psychic to maintain its crucial super effective smack on Venusaur, while utterly destroying a Toxicroak thinking itself safe. Sceptile could also go physical with a Swords Dance set, as with a Swords Dance set, it completely turned the tables on its would-be most reliable counter, Chansey, ripping through it with a boosted Leaf Blade, as well as smashing Registeel, Arcanine, and Toxicroak with a boosted Earthquake, and dropping Moltres and Altaria with Rock slide. Swords Dance Sceptile wasn't always the move, given that it was operating off of its significantly lower attack stat, but the surprise factor meant it was legitimate, especially since it had the speed to capitalize on that surprise to the max. That speed meant it could take over battles with absurd ease, since offensive teams too frail to take its hits were generally only going to be beating it with Scarfers or Priority, both of which were exploitable in their own way. Sceptile didn't even have to go all out aggressive. Its trademark subseed set, while greatly annoyed by Venus and Clefable was potentially just as much of a game ender once it got going. Overall though, it was Sceptile's boosted special hits that were its bread and butter as so much of the tier struggled to withstand its mighty specs leaf storms. Have fun switching in your so-called resists. Yeah, Leafeon, Houndoom, and Toxicroak will just love that huge, huge hit. And Arceus help you if Sceptile dropped into Overgrow range. So all in all, Sceptile was an excellent Pokemon in Generation 4 underused. Sceptile received a tremendous new ability in Generation 5, Unburden, which doubled its speed once its item was used. This would allow Sceptile to outrun every Scarfer that usually revenge kill it by a country mile, and given that it could activate Unburden with the newly added gems, which would also give it a much appreciated burst of power, specifically Flying Gem, which went hand in hand beautifully with Acrobatics, a move Sceptile loved for its ability to help it crush an otherwise perfect counter in Eviolite Roselia. Acrobatics Sceptile, whether on a mixed set or Swords Dance set, was a force on offensive teams. A vicious mix of Wall Breaker and Cleaner, which vaulted it to stardom in the new RU tier. A metagame famous for its resemblance to Diamond and Pearl underused. Swords Dance Sceptile was particularly fierce, as it was a physical attacker that Alomomola wanted nothing to do with. While mixed Sceptile slammed opponents with heightened immediacy through its mass of coverage options, hitting a great deal of the tier super effectively. Sceptile wasn't just an acrobatics machine either. Good old Spec Sceptile remained ferocious for Leaf Storm's sheer spammable power, letting it seriously dent or straight up destroy many common grass resists. Rotom Mo, for instance, was by no means frail, but a Spec Storm Absorber? Not unless it was occasionally the specially defensive set. The more common offensive sets got crushed, as did Pokemon like Entei and Embor, to say nothing of all the top tier staples like Golurk and Slowking that were hit super effectively. Spec Sceptile was particularly excellent because it now had superb secondary grass stab in the Giga Drain that had had its power and PP buffed. No longer could one attempt to play around it in the late game by baiting it to drop its special attack with Leaf Storm, nor could one take advantage of Leaf Storm's 8 PP. Nope, Spex Tile, as it was called, would happily clean up with Giga Drain. Additionally, the solid base power and good neutral coverage of Dragon Pulse, as well as its crucial super effective smash against Dredagon, of course, meant it was also quite spammable in cleanup scenarios late game, giving Sceptile a ton of flexibility and how it could finish teams off and being all the better for it. It was so excellent because Spex's power let it act as a wall breaker, but unlike other similarly strong Pokemon, Sceptile's incredible speed let it play as a late game sweeper too, and it required no setup either, just immediately blasting damage. And so Sceptile added a great deal of depth to its game and excelled once more in Generation 5 RU.
No more flying gem in Gen 6. While Sceptile losing this perfect unburdened strategy was quite a worthwhile trade-off. Even though Leaf Storm had been nerfed from 140 to 130 base power and Hidden Power had taken a hit from 70 to 60. Sceptile had a quiet XY, but come Oras, it received a mega evolution, which finally leaned into its vaguely draconic design. The Dragon Pulse it had previously wielded was now stabbed, as the half grass, half dragon mega Sceptile now had a dual stab combination with which to dismantle opponents. It had a lot more than that too. Its speed rocketed up to a stunning base 145, the same as its newly terrifying special attack. Its lightning rod ability gave it an incredible electric immunity, meaning it could block one of the most obnoxious moves in the game, Vault Switch. Finally, some defensive utility for a famously frail Pokemon, and it even got a plus 10 boost to its base defense, which didn't change much but was still nice. Mega Sceptile didn't have the overwhelming force and coverage to make much of a mark as an OU threat. A few players tried it, but it quickly became Came very clear that it wasn't on par with its competition. However, it settled into UU perfectly, immediately establishing itself as an excellent mega. It was exactly the type of forceful wall breaker perfect for offensive teams. All you had to do was give it a free switch in via the tier's many switch moves, and you were in business, as not much wanted to take on the combination of Leaf Storm, Giga Drain, and Dragon Pulse. And the few that did were struck lethally by Focus Blast if it actually hit, or hit in Power Fire, to say nothing of the many resists that crumpled under Leaf Storm's raw strength. You could try to pivot around it with prediction, but it would throw up a substitute on the switch, and now you had to withstand its hits at full force, which, given how difficult a task that was, almost surely meant you were in trouble. Mega Sceptile was a refreshingly uncomplicated Pokemon, as it pretty much always simply attacked without anything fancier than substitute in its moveset. It was popular on offensive teams, able to provide that beautiful blend of high-speed revenge killing and late-game cleaning while still threatening to break defensive course open, and all it needed was some switch moves to help it get on the field. Its biggest problem was competition for the Mega Slot with the even faster Aerodactyl, but Mega Sceptile was far from outclassed, and its ability to threaten it with its unique stab combination was a major characteristic of 6th generation UU. Meanwhile, Base Sceptile had some interesting adventures of its own down in NU, where it was absolutely superb. It outsped the tier with absurd ease, it hit everything incredibly hard, and most importantly of all, it had great moveset diversity on top of that which made countering it an absolute nightmare. It wasn't bad enough that it could overwhelm you with power, no. It could also just completely invalidate its own checks depending on its moveset. Can't every Pokemon do this to some extent? Well, yes, but such Pokemon being manageable hinges on them not being as fast and strong as Sceptile was against the NU tier. A healthy Pokemon surprising a counter generally isn't as battle and metagame shattering as Sceptile was. It was unreasonably difficult to answer and recover from its assault. Sceptile brought the heat with choice specs once again, as well as a Swords Dance set wielding Citrus Berry for the Unburdened and Acrobatics boost, and an all-out mix set. Specs was the one that just clicked attacks and shredded most in its path. With the mix set, Pokemon like Charizard and Scyther that could actually quad-resist Leaf Storm were completely ruined as checks because oops, Rock Slide, goodbye. With the Swords Dance variant, Vile Plume, an otherwise very good answer, and a quad Leaf Storm resist of that, got blown away by boosted Acrobatics. Both the mix set and Swords than sets his earthquake meant you could forget about Garbodor taking it on. Given Sceptile's immense speed, revenge killing it was far more difficult than your typical hard-hitting wall breaker. And of course, the Swords Dance set's unburdened boost took this to an extreme, meaning even Scarfers couldn't handle it. Sceptile was putting incredible pressure on the player base both in the team builder and on the battlefield, and eventually they decided enough was enough. It was time for a suspect test. Opinions were divided, Sceptile's frailty was often cited as a major factor, and it was true as Sceptile's users really had to walk on eggshells around the problem. Even in a tier as low as NU, Sceptile was not at all a hit taker. However, the fact of the matter was that it simply KO'd too much and was too fast for how much it KO'd. As a result, Sceptile was hit with the ban hammer and went to NUBL. And it was pretty outclassed in the RU tier above, but that was just fine as Sceptile had already racked up another successful generation and this time in two different forms. Sceptile was never much of a doubles Pokemon given its immense frailty and lack of real support tactics. Pretty much the antithesis of VGC grasses. However, upon receiving its mega evolution, it found a tiny, tiny, barely even considered a niche for itself. Competition for the mega slot was incredibly fierce, but Mega Sceptile had some things to like. Most notably, the ability to outrun and smash Mega Salamence with Dragon Pulse, as well as outspeeding many variants of Scarf Lander Hysterion. Even still, it wasn't much. It was absolutely worthless against talent 
Talon Flame and Trick Room, popular pillars of the metagame at the time, but it found a few placements. Most interestingly, Jip Snowick reached 8th at the Netherland Regionals, pairing it with Heliolis, whose discharge hit Mega Sceptile's Lightning Rod and gave it a much appreciated special attack boost. Additionally, that's a plus one, reached 5th at the California Winter Regionals, and at the 2016 Italian Nationals, the restricted metagame, Alessio Yuri Boschetto reached 7th, utilizing Mega Sceptile's ability to strike Primal Kyogre and Mega Rayquaza super effectively, as as well as having the Raichu style lightning rod electric move absorption. Now, of course, it wasn't really a true part of those two meta games, to say the least, but it was better than nothing. Mega Sceptile didn't fit into the new UU metagame of Generation 7, but that was just fine, as it absolutely excelled in the new RU, and it did so despite the fact that there was strong grass-type competition in Virizion and Roserade, neither of which took up the Mega Slot. However, Mega Sceptile was absolutely worth it, with how its speed towered over the rest of the tier, and its power threatened most everything in its path. Its stabs were as fierce as ever, but its go-to set became a new spin on its old playstyle, as it incorporated Leech Seed and Protect into its moveset. Protect allowed it to completely stuff first impression attempts from Golisopod, while also safely scouting revenge killing attempts from Scarfers, the ones fast enough to outrun Mega Sceptile anyway, as it was so fast it outran the likes of Gardevoir, and Leech Seed had incredible synergy with Protect, allowing Mega Sceptile to reliably drain and wear down whichever bulky Pokemon wanted to switch into it, from Mandibuzz to Registeel to Florges, as well as maximizing the provided recovery for the sake of Mega Sceptile's longevity, allowing it the opportunity is necessary to bludgeon the opponent repeatedly until they succumb. Mega Sceptile now had much greater freedom in hitting the field via not just switch move using teammates, but directly switching into weak resistance moves since it could heal them off with Leech Seed, as well as its accentuation from Giga Drain. The Gen 7 Burn nerf helped a lot in both this regard and the efficacy of its Leech Seeds, as taking 6.25% per turn as opposed to the previous 12.5% was far more manageable, and meant Mega Sceptile wasn't half bad at switching into Scalds, especially useful for offensive teams that otherwise couldn't afford a truly reliable answer into the move. Leech Seed also made Mega Sceptile into more of a team player, as the recovery could bolster teammates as well. The ability to hit hard and fast while also playing the more utility-focused style of Leech Seed gave a ton of depth to its game, and this combined with how well Mega Sceptile matched up against the metagame at large, including a tremendously advantageous one-on-one -on -one matchup against the tier's best Mega, Blastoise, meant Mega Sceptile Sceptile was an excellent defining force in Gen 7 RU. Base Sceptile returned to NU, and this time around, it wasn't broken, but it was superb once again. It wielded a simple life orb all-out attacking set, and sliced through much of the tier with its characteristic amazing speed and good power. What was particularly impressive is that it achieved this in spite of the metagame's focus on many top-tier Pokemon that messed with it in some way. Incineroar, Scarf Pasibian, Garbodor, and many other grass resists. Yet, Sceptile with the raw power of Leaf Storm and the right coverage for the job still managed to play its game as it always had and did so well. Its resist denting Leaf Storm was terrifying because of the many other top tier Pokemon it so utterly decked, super effectively and neutrally alike, from Slow King and Blastoise to Heliolisk and Steelix. And your resist preferred switching into Leaf Storm and still taking notable heavy damage rather than getting outright crushed by Focus Blast, Hidden Power Ice, or Earthquake. Forget thinking you could lure Leaf Storm, drop its special attack and deal with it that way either, as Sceptile could catch such attempts not just with coverage, but with its second stab move, Giga Drain, meaning it wasn't even a prediction, as it was still clicking the grass move it wanted to, and Giga Drain did this while healing Sceptile, and thus preventing it from getting worn down by its own life orb, so you could rule that out as an option too. Sceptile was once again a reliably excellent force on offensive teams, giving it a genuinely great gig in Generation 7 NU, and capping off another successful generation for Sceptile as a whole. Mega Sceptile still didn't have much of a VGC presence at all in Gen 7, but once again its innate good traits of stabs and speed inspired a few players to try it, and it managed some placements. At the 2018 Peru special event, Jose Benavides reached 6. Then in 2019, funnily enough, Base Sceptile actually had a placement in the Sun series, where Megas were banned. Sebastian Gomez reached 13th at the Santiago de Chile special event. Mega Sceptile then popped up again a couple times in the Ultra series. Luis Madrano reached 
reached fourth at the Panama Special Event, and Devin Powers reached 13th at the Santa Clara Regionals. Once again, the nichest of the niche, but it was something. No more Mega Sceptile in Gen 8, but Sceptile kept right on trucking. It dropped to PU this time around and was absurdly broken. Who'd have thought such a low powered tier would struggle with such a strong, fast Pokemon? Metagame staples all collapsed before its stab and coverage. Gigalith, Sandslash, Charizard, Rabombi, even so called checks like Ferrisseed and Togedemaru were really just victims temporarily deluded into thinking otherwise. If you didn't have Eldegoss, you were toast. Wait, that could get lured by Acrobatics. Never mind. Oh, and the best part? Sceptile was supported by Terrains. In DD Female, Psychic Terrain lets Sceptile eat its Psychic Seed, activating Unburdened and boosting its special defense along the way. It was so naturally fast that it outran everything with Unburdened activated and could thus invest in max HP, making it bulky. Yes, that's right. Bulky Sceptile, because it just wasn't tough enough to deal with before. Now it was strong, fast, and a good hit taker. That wasn't even the only terrain supporting it either. It could also pair up with Thwacky for Grassy Terrain, which functions similarly as far as Grassy Seed activating Unburdened and bulking Sceptile out, except on defense this time. But it also powered up Sceptile's stab because it just wasn't strong enough already. Sceptile absolutely thrashed PU to within an inch of its life and got quick banned. It was far from done though. Turns out the Sceptile-Thwacky combination was excellent in NU2, and Sceptile could also pair up with Pinchurchin and its electric terrain. With its bulk, power, and speed, it was highly effective at slicing through the majority of NU teams, crushing would-be answers like top-tier Pokemon Vileplume and Guzzlord, potentially even slotting in Rock Slide to drop the seemingly perfect check in Talonflame, as well as Earthquake to rip through Garbodor. The problem was that Sceptile was not worth much of anything outside of terrain, but in terrain, it was so outstanding as to be mandatory on teams abusing them. Strangely, terrain teams' popularity didn't match their tournament success, so that and Sceptile's specificity prevented it from attaining the usage necessary to become a true NU Pokemon. But that meant nothing regarding its excellent viability in the tier and capacity to ruthlessly checkmate opponents. So overall, Generation 8 was another smashing success for Sceptile. Sceptile has returned to PU in Generation 9, and it once again has taken up the mantle of Unburdened Sweeper alongside terrain support from Thwacky and Indeedee Female. Its Swords Dance acrobatic sets with corresponding seeds remain poised to sweep at a moment's notice with surgical precision, but there are two primary differences to Sceptile's PU game now. The first is that Sceptile is no longer completely beholden to such sets and their reliance on terrains. It is also capable of blasting away with old-fashioned special attacking sets. The second is that that whether it's swords dancing or leaf storming, Sceptile is a tremendous abuser of terrestrialization. As a special attacker, it can terrestrialize fire and unleash terror blasts that make past hidden power fires blush in comparison. And as a swords dancer, it is utterly terrifying with terrestrializing flying, with acrobatics becoming even more of a game ender. At this point, the PU metagame is going through one massive shakeup after another, but it looks as though Sceptile will continue to do Sceptile things. It's got plenty of solid grass type competition, but no other grass can do quite what Sceptile does. It's a bit early to call Gen 9 a rousing success or anything of the sort, but it looks bright at this point in time. And that's it. So how great was Sceptile actually? Well, it's had a rich competitive history. It had a small niche in its debut generation of OU, where it was far too good for UU below. But starting in Gen 4, it carved out a long, highly successful career as one of the best lower tier Pokemon of all time. It was superb in Gen 4 UU, Gen 5 RU. It excelled in UU in Gen 6 with its new Mega Form, while its base form was so good in NU it got itself banned. Gen 7 saw Mega Sceptile rock RU and base Sceptile thrive in NU. Then in Generation 8, it dropped to PU, where it was hilariously broken and quickly got banned before going on to thrive in NU again. So far in Generation 9, Sceptile has been succeeding in PU once again. So overall, Sceptile has been one of the most defining Pokemon of the lower tiers for many generations now, and it doesn't look to be slowing down. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Sceptile? Would you buff it whatever it is let me know in the comments also thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos and thank you to everyone else watching as well and follow my crew on these social media platforms and that's all i got see you next time everyone